No, this is not clickbait. You can actually finish these questions in about 10 seconds. In case we haven't met, I'm Robert, the founder of Penguin Test Prep. And in this video, I'm going to cover five medium to hard questions that you can finish in 10 seconds or less, provided that you have the base knowledge required to solve them quickly. All right. Boom, okay, y equals three. Um, so how did I solve that so quickly? Well, we've got a system of equations and, and a lot of the time I'll recommend throwing these guys into Desmos, but I noticed that we have two X and negative two X. So with systems of equations, you are allowed to add them together. This is part of the elimination strategy if you're familiar with it. And if you're not familiar with the elimination strategy, let me know if you'd like me to make a video on that. But basically, if we add them together, we get 2x minus 2x, so x disappears. So now we're just solving for y. So then I added y to 3y, I got 4y. And then I added 16 to negative 4, got 12. And then to get y by itself, we divide by 4. 12 divided by 4 is going to be 3. So that's how I did that one in under 10 seconds. Let's go. Okay, boom. So what I was doing there was, I noticed that all of my answer choices are going to not have a root. So basically we need to get this out of its root form. And what you do is you take the uh, cube root and you say that's the same thing as all of this stuff raised to the one third. So instead I'm thinking all this stuff raised to the one third. Uh, well, I know that one third is going to be a cube root for my whole number. And luckily eight has a cube root that I have memorized. It's just two because two times two times two is eight. So that's why I wrote the two. And then the rule for exponents is if you are raising an exponent to another exponent like this, you multiply. So six times one over three would be six over three or two. And then nine times one over three would be nine divided by three or three. So that's how I got choice B in under 10 seconds. All right. Got it. That was probably the fastest one yet, right? So uh, what's going on with this one? Well, perpendicular is going to mean the negative inverse slope. And even though we've got some weird stuff going on here, Slope is just going to be the coefficient in front of x. And when we multiply nine over four times x, we're just gonna end up with nine over four x, right? So then nine over four is our slope for uh, line p. If line q is perpendicular, then it would be the negative reciprocal, negative four over nine. So anytime you see perpendicular, there might be a, a nice shortcut there for you, depending on how things look. All right, let's go. It's gonna be five over two. And I don't think I can simplify that. Cool. Um, so this one in my head, I see infinite solutions. Infinite solutions means they are literally the same equation, which means among other things that they're gonna have the same slope. So because they have the same slope, the coefficients in front of X and Y will also have the same ratio. Now, this says we went from one fifth y to y. And in order to do that, we would have had to multiply by five. So to get our coefficient for x, I just took one half, multiplied it by five, and then we end up with five over two. So that's how I got that one so quickly. The takeaway is, if you see infinite number of solutions or no solutions for that matter, remember that the slope is the same and remember that the ratio between the coefficients of X and Y are also going to be the same. So if Y's coefficient goes through a change, in this case being multiplied by five, X's coefficient will go through that same exact change. All right, last one here, we've got positive six comma negative three. Okay, uh, that is, boom. I might've taken more than 10 seconds because it took me forever to actually circle the answer. But that is my answer. And how in the heck did I get that so fast? It's because I'm very familiar with the circle equation, which is X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared equals R squared. H and K 
are the center of my circle. Now, I know what you're thinking. What the heck, bro? That doesn't look like that at all. No, you're right, it doesn't. What we would normally have to do is we would have to complete the square and move stuff over here. And basically, to complete the square, you want to take the coefficient in front of x and y, and first you divide it by 2, and then you square it, and, that, and then you add that to each side. So we would get negative 12 divided by 2 is negative 6 squared, which is 36. So this would become x squared minus 12x plus 36. And this would factor to x minus 6 squared. Likewise, we would do the same thing to y, and we would end up with y squared plus 6y. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 3 squared is 9 plus 9. And that would factor to y plus 3 squared. Um, and then as far as the stuff that we add, all of this, the 36 and the 9, gets added to the right side. So technically, we would add that to the right side. And what is that? 45 plus 7, what is that, 52? But anyway, that doesn't matter because we're not worried about the, the radius, which is, you know, this is the radius squared. We're just concerned about the middle. And the middle is h, which is 6, because remember, it's minus h. So that negative 6 would become positive. And then y minus k, so this is negative 3. So that's 6, negative 3. But <laughs> I skipped all of that because in my head, when I see this question, I know that my coefficient divided by 2 is automatically going to end up in the parentheses there. So the shortcut for this, with all that in mind, and you know, go back if you need to, the shortcut for this is if they're asking about the center and it's in this form, you just take the opposite of your coefficients divided by 2. So since this is negative 12, it becomes positive 6. Negative divided by 2. Since this is positive 6, it becomes negative 3. Negative divided by 2. And that's the shortcut that you can use once you memorize it. Now you're gonna need to practice what you just learned. So go ahead and get 10 free practice questions using the link in the description. They're gonna be the same exact question types that we just went over in this video.